Um, this is going to be primarily about introducing this um, uh, simple standard for sharing ontology mappings, but also as a, on the sideline, a little bit of a plaidoyer for caring a bit more about the standardization and dissemination of ontology mappings in general. So even if you say, oh, I don't need another standard, just not another one or something like that, if this is your sentiment, it's still we still want to get across that standardizing and providing sufficient metadata for your mappings is something that is super valuable and I hope to uh, convince you of this. Um, many people are involved here. I'm not going to read all of them out. Um, you can see from the slides later and there's also a fair share record if you want to get some more information. Um, all right, so uh, what is the mapping in the sense of this talk? Uh, so I've seen this word, this term mapping used in many different contexts. So I just wanna clarify that um, uh, in our, we use the same kind of notion of mapping that uh, Ernesto was using in this talk. So as a basically a correspondence of two terms. So there are other kinds of mappings like mappings from a string to a term or mappings that are more complex, like for example, a the species specific anatomy term that maps to a more species general anatomy plus a taxon restriction identifier or something like that. But we are generally more concerned with this uh, second type here, although there are some discussions about type one and type three as well in the uh, around the SSSOM community in there. And there's a bit um, of questions how we will and if we will integrate these. Um, a mapping set, a word that I will use a, a, a lot, is uh, just a set of term mappings, um, usually assembled for some particular purpose, and an alignment in the sense of that uh, of Ernesto's talk is basically, a, in the way that I see this, a special kind of mapping set which contains all mappings between two um, ontologies, two or more. Uh, just a word because uh, we've been talking a lot about this question of convergence versus mapping, so um, uh, I do believe that mapping and convergence are two complementary approaches that we both need to integrate to achieve synergy. Convergence as this kind of continuous ontological unification, as we've discussed in some of the previous talks, as spearheaded by the Oboe Foundry, in which I'm also active and which uh, is very dear to my heart, and also this mappings uh, approach, uh, which is bridging across ontologies, like it's uh, like as you can find in browsers like UMLS and OXO. And while I do think that convergence, especially in the open space, is the ideal, I do think from what I've seen so far, and I'm happy to be convinced otherwise, that the idea of total convergence is very unrealistic because it's extremely expensive to achieve. Like many of the sources that code to one system, they won't be able, they won't be convinced to just move their codings to another one or there are different ontologies being developed simultaneously and there are also political issues and many many issues and in medical terminology you don't even consider this anymore there are terminologies created for very different use cases and mappings is just a first class citizen here that you need to consider so mapping is a reality and uh, they are essential for bringing uh, for bridging semantic spaces semantic silos ontologies and so on so I just want to say, um, yeah. So um, they are essential, but the problem is, is they are hard to use and hard to share at the moment. So uh, for example, one of the issues that we have is this issue of non-transparent imprecision. So uh, mappings uh, are rarely as we find them in the wild when you go to a repository and you see like a nice table with two columns, uh, IDs from HP, IDs from Metro or something like that you kind of hope uh, there, there are some kind of equivalence mappings, but they are rarely equivalence mappings. But the problem is we really don't know that. So in, in fact, terms like two terms, like here in this example, one Alzheimer's term in one ontology or Alzheimer's three in another ontology may be mapped by something like a narrow property, like for example, SCOS uh, narrow match or, uh, um, or the other way around, like a SCOS broad match or an OWL subclass of, uh, depending on whether your goal is logical integration or some kind of more like um, uh, more like a concept level integration. And um, the problem is, yeah, so in, we do believe that imprecision is not necessarily a bad thing. The problem is, though, if we don't know about this imprecision. So if, uh, if you get a mapping like this and you just blindly try to map data from Alzheimer's to Alzheimer's in one ontology to Alzheimer's three in another ontology, this is really bad because you can get like totally wrong results for your users. And um, 
so um, in the same, and this is kind of like aggregate, aggravated also if you are considering multi-hop uh, walkings where you go from Alzheimer's 2, you hop to the next one, which is Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's is mapped to Alzheimer's 3, and then and there are much worse cases than this one. And then you get like data mappings from Alzheimer's 2 to Alzheimer's 3. Obviously, this is not the kind of thing you want to uh, use uh, for your, uh, in many of the pre high precision use cases we have. So. You can't really use bidirectional or multi-hop crosswalks without knowing the exact precision of your mappings. Also, they are um, inaccurate and incomplete. So, um, for example, new tooling um, that exists that make like large-scale matching much more viable, like the tooling that uh, Ernesto was presenting before, um, and uh, the tooling that is also built by other initiatives like Monarch Initiative and also Postoya Alliance, they will uh, they um, they make it more viable to actually keep mappings up to date. But the precision and the accuracy will generally continue to be questionable. So you don't want to just take the results of a matcher and say, wow, this is 100% confidence, huge correct equivalence mapping. You will generally have some kind of process that will correct these mappings, humans that will look at these. And uh, uh, curators are generally very good for at uh, doing things like, um, yeah, like reviewing the accuracy of mappings, but for example, one of my uh, colleagues right now has a task on her plate to validate like 20,000 mappings from EFO to Medra and you, you just get like a huge table and go all, all through it. Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, or something like that. Obviously, if you are getting to this kind of scale of review, you will also make mistakes. So the accuracy of such mappings, even if a human will look like, is generally a bit questionable. So. And that's the one side. And the other is also that uh, even, even if you manage to get a, a, a nice mapping out, it's basically out of date the moment you, uh, you put it out there because obviously the ontologies that are uh, used here are uh, evolving and new terms are being added. And then you need to think like, okay, are there other better mappings now that new terms have been added? Anyway, so as an aside, uh, obviously also that we have the problem here that redoing the same mappings over and over again. I'm sure that there have been a thousand projects that man that map Medra to thousands of other terminologies uh, all this time. Uh, we need to think about how can we actually reuse people's other people's mappings effectively and not having to start from scratch each time we have a mapping project. project. So right now we have um, and we have a bunch of like kind of mapping systems. So, um, and again, in Ernesto's talk, he was hinting at the alignment API, which is more like a, a format, like an XML based format, which was introduced uh, for, um, for like more technical, uh, uh, like matchers, uh, which has not a lot of metadata, not a lot of the metadata that we need, but it's generally one great thing, at least something that happened there. You have the bioportal mappings, which especially did a very good job on standardizing the predicates that are used in these mappings, but otherwise don't provide like a big like metadata for these uh, vocabulary for these mappings. And obviously you have the way that Obo Foundry is dealing with um, mappings at the moment, which is this like horrendous, sorry for using this term, uh, technique of using these has DBX ref uh, cross references, which basically initially were supposed to be some kind of like equivalence mappings, but I guess, or not even sure whether they were supposed to be, but in any case, now they are basically just associative mapping. So you can't really trust them at all. Like this was also a bit illustrated by these hairballs that, um, that uh, David showed in his talk in the beginning. Um, uh, yeah, so again, not real standard for representing mappings, just a convention of how to encode a mapping in an ontology. And then there are others like SNOMAD, there are the open facts link sets, um, and there are BridgeDB mapping vocabulary, which is a small thing that I've just read this week, a nice proposal by, uh, I think it's the EOSC, uh, wider EOSC community about a flexible semantic mapping framework that they've trying to introduce and uh, Nuria who's also here uh, has uh, pointed me to their uh, work on uh, defining an ontology mapping metadata schema that we want to align also with SSS or MNC uh, how we get how far we get so uh, yeah mappings generally are pretty unfair I'm slightly overrunning so I have to rush through the slide but I uh, just want to say 
uh, generally, we don't have the same kind of cool infrastructure that we have for many of our ontologies. So uh, there's no, so I stole this slide. That's why I gave the provenance here for the fair is fair um, uh, project. So uh, do you have, um, the, we have no dedicated repositories. We have no minim minimum metadata standards, at least uh, for the kind of metadata that we really need. Uh, we don't have, um, uh, okay, we have some accessible APIs like BioPortal and OLS, but uh, not to retrieve, including this metadata again. Very few common practices on syntactic level, you know, and uh, in particular also we do not, and that's kind of one of the hampers for a reuse, the R part. We don't really know, like we don't provide enough like proper rich metadata, like we don't know the curation rules, why were these two terms mapped together and uh, uh, many high precision scenarios like the ones that um, Melissa described before really wouldn't permit reusing those kinds of mapping without knowing how did this actually come together, this mapping. All right, so uh, what could mappings be? They could be transparently inaccurate, transparently incomplete, transparently imprecise, transparently conflicting, open, fair, and easy to use. So we, we are proposing basically this uh, this uh, metadata standard called uh, SSSOM, a simple standard for sharing ontology mappings. The central concepts here are this concept of a mapping set that I described before that contain uh, mappings. Um, uh, they are also in this kind of wider arc framework, the notion of a mapping commons, which is a sort of open space that aggregates mappings from various sources and then tries to reconcile them and creates reference mappings from these. And then there are mapping servers like OLS, like BioPortal and so on that serve mappings with this uh, with uh, rich metadata attached to them um, and potentially even produce derived mapping sets like combining different mapping sets and bridging across them. So in particular, like on the specific mapping, we have like the subject, the predicate and the object. At the moment, these are terms. There are some discussions, as I said before, to elevate those to complex, more complex um, uh, constructs. Uh, and then the, the predicate, which can be one of many. And then um, we have a, a various different in metadata attached to them, like for example, which fields were used to match um, what is the match type? Was it done by a human or oh, uh, double, uh, it's double here. What's the confidence for this mapping uh, and so on. So I'm not going to into too much detail because I'm running slightly over, but this, uh, the standard is defined using a, a link ML schema that also has exports into other formalisms like JSON schema in particular and uh, checks, but uh, also produces automated markdown documentations and provides a bunch of uh, metadata items that you can look at if you want uh, looking at the site. This is how, in, uh, so SSM, the kind of like canonical representation is the TSV file. The TSV file is basically has two parts. Uh, you have like this header part, which has a bunch of metadata attached to it using comments. And then you have this main part, which is just a regular TSV file, um, where, like with the items that I described before, like the subject ID, the predicate. So it's using SCOS exact match. Where does it come from, subject source, and so on. So just to get a sense of how does an SSSOM file look like. And files like these can easily be read even with standard Python toolkits like Pandas, just using the, the comment option. Um, we also develop a, just checking the time, uh, we also develop a Python toolkit that does things like chain, um, migrating and uh, translating files from overgraphs, for example, into SSSOM or the alignment API XML. So I can use, for example, agreement maker light mappings, automated mappings from the, or from the ontology and, uh, evaluation initiative, translate them into SSSOM and then just use that. Uh, do other operations like export them into JSON LD, RDF, and so on, and also merge them together. This is very, very early alpha, so it's hopefully we get it better this year. Okay, last slides. Um, um, I just want to say, this, despite the standard, standard so um, uh, some recommendations in general. So please, like, if you are in where anywhere where can you, where you can influence this, publish mappings in the standard file format, that would be a, a great start to make them a bit fair. Um, TSV, CSV, JSON, XML, but don't bury them in databases, really just make files. Um, also provide standard open licenses for these, uh, referring to a standard metadata schema, such as, for example, the ones that I proposed or any other ones, which we can easily translate. 
providing it all in an open space with a GitHub tracker, with an issue tracker like GitHub, so that we can fix and change those maps. And you can say, this is a wrong one, please fix it. Um, and uh, provide metadata at the very least. What precision is it? Is it exact, narrow, co high, what confidence? Is it done by a human or a machine? And provide some kind of uh, a curation rule, like how did you get to this mapping? What are the rules by which you decided that this is a map? There are lots of other things, obviously, but these are the absolute essentials. And uh, I also would like to propose personally to actually explicitly use CC0 or CC BY. CC BY has a good reason to actually preserve prominence a bit. Uh, and also, uh, yeah, uh, stick with CSV and TSV rather than any of the other formats because that's what the data science pipelines are reading mostly and uh, provide rich metadata and generally treat your mappings with the same love and care as your ontologies and vocabularies. Um, just some acknowledgement. So this work was uh, funded by uh, Phenomics First grant uh, in the context of our Mondo work, especially in the client development uh, by a gift from Bosch to uh, Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratories, especially contributing to the uh, SSOM Pi and testing and converters, uh, lots of uh, open uh, voluntary contributions from the community, Charlie Hoyt, the Pistoia Alliance, uh, John Graybeer from Stanford, James McLevin from EBI and so on, but they're also kind of like now part of the core team. Um, yeah. So uh, please, uh, uh, yeah, uh, striving for convergence. Yeah, I know I should uh, stop. Um, they are complementary processes. Uh, they are, your mappings are super valuable. Please share them in the standard format. Uh, please, please curate some minimal metadata and get involved in the project if you're interested. Sorry for overrun. Thank you very much. No worries. This was a great presentation. Thank you very much, Nico. I have a quick question. You kind of went over it, but uh, in an ideal world, how would you describe the mapping workflow uh, for you? Yeah, in your okay. point of view. All right. So in the ideal world, we have, uh, first of all, so let's say we have a blank slate. You have uh, two uh, semantic silos, whether they are ontologies or just databases, doesn't matter now. In a perfect world, we start with a uh, with a rough uh, automated process like the ones described by Ernesto, getting some uh, some mappings to start from. Then we iterate over them with again automated procedures like Boomer, the one that will be presented tomorrow, to reconcile the, ma the mappings in such a way that they yield a kind of coherent semantic uh, picture. Let's say they don't violate semantic constraints imposed by the semantic silos. Uh, and then after that, though, I would like humans to actually look at these mappings and say that th we need to reject this particular mapping that's wrong. It should be actually that and it needs to be incorporated into this workflow. The human needs to be and I don't really believe that this should change in the next 20 years, at least no matter what machine learning does. Uh, the human needs to be there and needs to be able to provide actually input, say wrong, right, wrong. And then it all needs to go cycle, cycle and produce good reference mappings. That's how I, I see it. No, I, I think I agree with you in terms of the hybrid approach to this. Uh, I'm a huge fan of hybrid approach as well, for now at least, uh, like you said. Well, thank you very much. 